Hello and welcome. Now in this video we're going to create this bouncing ball effect in processing. I've already written a program for you to show what we're going to do for today and let's just see what we've got. So we've got this this bouncing ball effect in processing and we're going to create the same thing right from the scratch. So we're going to be building this bouncing ball effect in processing. Now as you can see if I close it and run it again, every time I run it, it gets something different. So this is what Generatorbot really is. It, it really should create something new every time we run the program. As you can see, if I, if I stop it and then run it again, so you can see the ball moves in a different direction. And once it hits one of the edges, one of the boundaries of, uh, of the, the sketch, it returns back so it bounces off the wall so this is uh, exactly what we're going to be creating in today's video so let's just get started so i would uh, i would want to create a new sketch so we have this sketch here and we're going to start coding so the first thing as you know we're going to do is we're going to quickly write our setup and our draw function and our setup function we want to set the size of our window since we're going to be doing this bouncing ball effect so I would want to keep our window a little larger than usual so uh, I want to keep my window size at 800 comma 800 and I want to set the background as white so I want to set it white so I'll set it to 55 so now note that if you want to uh, draw your background white you can simply give it to 55 and it's going to duplicate it three more times and it's essentially you know it's essentially same as writing to 55 three times so we just leave it uh, as, as, as it is and then we run it so as you can see there's a window and there's a background color that is 255 and now we're quickly going to start writing our code so uh, we uh, for this we need a few a few variables that we need to define so the first variable that we need is the x and y position of our ball to begin with so for this let's just start right from the middle of the screen so since our window uh, size is 800 comma 800 so the, the the x location is supposed to be 100 and we want to set a y as a half of our window height so that is 400 comma 400 and uh, one more thing that we need is the x velocity and the y velocity of our moving or our bouncing ball so for that let's just set our x velocity to be something like 5 and let's just set our y velocity as 3 now remember that we're going to set this we're going to set our uh, our velocity values hard coded for the moment for right now and then once we complete doing all these things we're going to randomize it using the random function for now let's just uh, let's just set it at five and three now and then let's just go to the draw function and the first thing that we really need to do inside of our draw function is to uh, draw the background color as white because we don't want to have that trail that, that that's left behind so we want to draw a function we want to draw a background white in every frame of our animation and then what we really want to do is we want to draw that ellipse draw that ellipse in our um, x and y position and we want a size for ellipse so for the size let's just declare a variable r equals 100 and set our width and height of our ellipse as r comma r and we wanna we wanna run it to, to check if everything is alright so everything is going doing great so now we really wanna change the feel of our ellipse so what I quickly would like to do is wanna change the feel to something red so I would wanna go with a feel a red color inside of our lips and if we run it as you can see there's our uh, red lips now we also want to animate it we want to we want our lips to move so 
in order to do so what I would like to do is change that x variable now this is the x position of our ellipse so I want it to move with the velocity of this x velocity so I really need to add up the velocity with the current location with the current position of our x so let's just add it and I also would uh, want to add the y velocity so y velocity and in this uh, so let's just find it again to see if it's working yes it is working but here's a problem now, uh, now our ellipse our ball is moving off the screen so it's not bouncing off it's not bouncing off the walls because we we haven't written the logic for the bouncing effect now for that what we really want to do is we want to create some 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 constraints so that the ball does not escape the boundaries of our window now as you can see it is, the ball is going this way so what I really want to do is I uh, want to check the location of the ball and if the location of the ball is outside of the boundary I want to reverse the ball now by reverse I mean I want to change the X and Y velocities of our ball now in order to do so I, I would want to check the the location of our ball so if the, the the location of our bouncing ball is greater than the width of our screen so as you can see it is it is being highlighted with a red color that means that it is a width of our window that is 800 so if it is greater than the uh, width of our screen so by the way this is a conditional statement so it so it allows us to write conditions for a piece of code to run so if it is greater than our width or so or is written with this parallel pipes that you can see this is an or this is an or not an and so if our x value is greater than width or x is less than zero what we want to do is we want to reverse the x velocity so I want to reverse the x velocity which means that I want the, my current velocity to multiply itself by 1 and now in similarly I would also want to check the y position of a ball so if it is greater than the height or it is less than 0 I would also like to reverse the velocity of our ball so, so the y velocity is y velocity times minus one now once we set uh, set this conditions uh, so I would set this conditions and I think it's good to go so let's just give it a run and let's just see what happens so our ball is running there you go it is bouncing off yeah I mean everything seems to be seems to be working correctly now one more thing I would quickly want to uh, like to add is we we don't want to we don't want to always start off with the same X and Y velocities as you can see every time I run the code I get the similar results so I don't want that I don't want I, I want I want a bouncing ball to start off with a random velocity every time we start a program so for that I want to use a random function so our x velocity is going to be a random number between 5 and minus 5 and 5 so essentially it is going to move in a random velocity either uh, either in a positive x velocity or, or with a positive or a negative x velocity and similarly I would also want my y velocity to be a random number between minus 5 and 5 so if I run it again so here as you can see it is running slowly but it is working correctly now if I stop it and run it again it has got a different velocity and a different direction so every time I run the program I get a different result as you can see and so this way we have quickly written a bouncing ball program in processing 
So I think this is enough for today, enough for this video, and in our upcoming videos, we're going to discuss more about generative arts, more about creating animations and processing. So until then, um, let's just say, um, happy coding.